Our first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, under adjustments to agenda, under new business, we are going to add two items. Um, item D will be a teacher position, and item, uh, item C will be a teacher position. Item D will be a PASS budget. Are there any other adjustments? Seeing none. Um, the next is approval of the December school board meeting minutes. Are there any adjustments? I believe there's an incorrect date in here somewhere. Seeing none, the minutes stand. Our next would be comments by our high school representatives. Ryan Moore, junior at the high school. Matt Martin, junior at the high school too. Uh, first off, we've had three SAC meetings uh, since the last school board meeting. The first one, uh, mostly we discussed the eligibility policy that we've been working on. Uh, it was brought to our attention that some of the teachers were worried about uh, particularly the length of the probation period. Uh, so we discussed uh, possible ways of sort of clearing that up. I uh, took the whole meeting and finally decided that we should have a subcommittee meeting on it, which we did. Uh, I thought it was very productive and um, the members of the subcommittee brought that back to the SAC. Uh, we voted on it and uh, had it written up. Um, and the uh, final draft is being done right now, I believe. At our most recent meeting last week, we uh, brought up the problem of parking at the high school, and we uh, dedicated that meeting to generating new ideas on, or some ideas on how we could fix that problem. Um, the problem is that as more sophomores and underclassmen get their license as the year goes on, um, it's been increasingly hard to find a spot because the seniors have their own lot and then down low are all the underclassmen. So as that lot continually fills, it's uh, getting harder and harder to find a spot as you come to school if you get there a little late. So we came up with ideas of utilizing the sand lot by the tennis courts and using the overflow lot and maybe even parking on the grass at, as you go up towards the, off, the back way to the office. but. We haven't uh, come up with a finalized idea. We've asked Mr. Dawson about it, and we're still talking about it. So we, it's still open in the SAC. Um, also in that meeting, which was our last meeting, we uh, discussed student involvement, um, which was our third goal for the, for the SAC for the year. I think most people took it to mean um, sort of school spirit. Uh, we just came up with a few ideas, like uh, it's kind of a spirit week like we had in middle school. A lot of, I, I think a lot of people were sort of against the whole middle school idea. Um, more support for sporting events, such as a pet band or that sort of thing. Uh, just the general uh, school spirit idea. Um, as we've come back from vacation, uh, the student morale has been a little down, knowing that midterm's <coughs> coming up next week, and it's a little grim at the high school, plus not having or having school last week when nobody else did. But um, it's been increasing. Um, the sports teams have been doing very well um, in the holiday tournaments and as we've come back. And also the play has been performing the past week after cancellations last week. And, um, it, I believe it's the final showing is tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. And uh, we went, we thought it was very good. And we were proud of our school members that were in it. Looking forward to uh, uh, maybe a musical or uh, one act. Not quite sure where the funding is, though. So, maybe in the spring. That's it. 
I thank you, and I also thank you for addressing the safety issue. Um, I think you really need to make it an education of your of your drivers that of being very cautious about going in and out and backing up because there have been numerous accidents. And, yeah, so you, and I think with young drivers, especially a lot of sophomores who just get their licenses, they aren't attentive, especially getting out of school. That was also brought up at our meeting. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> Keith? With, with, the, with all the parking, has there been uh, research done in terms of how many the numbers are, how many people are driving to school? I don't think anything technical yet. We just know that there's uh, a lot of illegal parking going down uh, yeah. on the lower lot, and the police have noticed, notified us about that. And they don't want to have to give tickets, but they informed us that they will start. I don't imagine you're going to be able to park on the grass. No, that was uh, yeah. promptly denied, but that was just yeah. <laughs> You folks may not recognize it, but you've already achieved your goal, your goal of student involvement. Um, having the benefit of attending your meetings and being in the high school on a fairly often basis. That didn't sound right, but uh, I, I've, I've noticed uh, continuing ongoing involvement in all activities by all students. I want to compliment the SAC for their participation in things like the CAPE Coalition, uh, which is also student involvement, um, and your participation as uh, you know, uh, attending school events outside of school, and to congratulate you all on your demeanor. Uh, the CAPE reputation is rapidly improving uh, in my eyes and in the eyes of other participants from other schools. Uh, you guys are doing a great job. I commend the SAC and the entire student body. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we will now hear from our middle school reps. <clears throat> Hi, um, I'm Chelsea Burr, a school board rep from middle school. And on January 29th at Gray New Gloucester, there will be another math meet. And our girls' basketball tryouts and practices began yesterday, and 27 girls tried out for the team. And the first game will be on Tuesday the 21st. And the boys' basketball team will have their last game tomorrow against Scarborough at home. Uh, debate team was supposed to have their first meet tomorrow, but it is being rescheduled for another day. And drama club has, assi has assigned parts and rehearsal begins on the 27th. The school will be holding a spelling bee February 9th in the cafetorium for the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. There are four levels to this spelling bee. There's the school level, the county level, the state level, and the national level. Progress reports will be going home this Friday. In the student council news, we would like to welcome our new fifth grade representatives, Corinne Earnshaw and Bethany Roy. Also, for a teacher shadowing update, we have all been assigned a teacher to con uh, a school board representative to contact, and you should be notified shortly and offered the opportunity to come and spend time with us. And that's about all. Oh, and indoor track and swimming will be starting pretty um, in the first week of February. And also um, for the more student council news, the dance will be held February 6th and the seventh, the sixth grade will be sixth, fifth and sixth grade will be going to Happy Wheels um, the last week in January on that Friday. Is there any questions? Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Shelton. Thank you. Uh, we move on to communications. I have one letter from Jackie Petrillo. As you recall, Jackie has been on a leave of absence this year, and she has notified us that she does not plan to return to her teaching job, but that she does plan to return and assist us in our special education program as a ed technician. So we're very delighted to have her services at that level. We do have a position available for we Jackie will. as an yes. tech. Yes. Great. Any other communication? 
Okay, we next move on to superintendent's report, report on staff development days. It seems like a long time ago, but on the 22nd and 23rd of December, we had our two staff development days. And although I had much fear and trepidation about people's level of concentration on those two days, they did work very well. I think people were very interested in what was going on. I think they were productive days. And uh, we feel that we have a lot of continuing activities that have grown out from those two days. And I also have a rather lengthy report for George on uh, time, quotes, time, for the time study committee. Okay, we now move on to principal's report. First for the high school. I think that uh, Ryan and Matt mentioned uh, the, uh, uh, the emotions <laughs> that uh, captured the student body on Friday uh, when, when we were uh, one of the uh, only schools. But I, I think they, they failed to mention that that was only the, about the first 45 minutes. And then I did give an uplifting speech uh, <laughs> uh, over the PA system at about 8.30. And I think the mood changed dramatically after that. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, at the moment, the big thing that, uh, that high school students are, are facing and preparing for is semester exams. Uh, as uh, most of you probably know, but, but uh, possibly some of you who don't have uh, children in the high school, uh, we do have semester exams at the end of the first semester and then at the end of <clears throat> the year. And during that time, we use a, a modified schedule. The students will be uh, coming to school only when they have exams, and there will be two uh, the possibility of two two-hour exams uh, per day, and they're uh, scheduled according to periods. So, for example, on uh, Tuesday the 20th, the first day of exams, periods one and five, if you have exam uh, a course, periods one and or five, you would take your exams from 7.30 to 9.30 and then 10 to 12, and then two and six, three and seven, uh, and four and eight, finally. So the students are in the school uh, for their exams, they uh, are free to leave uh, at noon. We do provide, uh, through Sue Weatherby, uh, reorganization of the bus schedules. We do provide bus transportation for the students at the, uh, at the end of that time. Uh, Matt and Ryan mentioned the uh, current theater production uh, that is going on, attractions. Uh, if you haven't had a chance uh, yet to, uh, to, to get to it, uh, I hope you'll take advantage of tomorrow night's performance. It is truly a delight. I uh, attended the uh, Sunday uh, matinee after some rather frustrating postponements that the, the cast and crew had had to uh, deal with uh, in the first two nights that it was scheduled. Um, but it was uh, truly magical, uh, a lot of fun, a lot to think about. It's 70 uh, students that are involved in either on stage or uh, off stage uh, roles. Uh, it, uh, it really uh, was a, a great introduction for me to the uh, Cape Theater program. And, and one of the things that I thought I would highlight this evening for you, because it's, it's very possible uh, that you or that our, uh, our students uh, and, and faculty aren't aware that it's uh, uh, somewhat rare uh, is the amount of uh, flexibility and coordination exhibited by the various people, uh, and I'm, I'm using theater to highlight this because it's timely, but the people who are uh, advising, coaching, directing our co-curricular program the philosophy here, uh, very, I've seen a great deal of evidence that, that tells me that the philosophy is to try to give the students as many opportunities as possible. A lot of districts make a different choice. They choose that if, if a student is involved, for example, in basketball in the winter, then that's what they're involved in and, and uh, there's nothing else. If they're involved in a theater production, that's their involvement. Here. I think we, we sometimes have to walk a very delicate balance between having students overcommitted, but the efforts that I've seen uh, here from our co-curricular uh, leaders are, are really impressive to me and very student-centered. Uh, students are participating in the theater production and are also on the basketball team and in the jazz band, or they're swimming and they're, uh, they're in speech and debate, uh, and the coaches and, and advisors are making the schedule work so that students can 
attempt and try to be exposed to the types of activities uh, uh, that they would like to try. And I think that's a really uh, healthy approach, and I, I applaud their uh, flexibility and the amount of time that it be because it takes tremendous uh, amount of time to coordinate it that way. You're constantly having to check with your fellow uh, co-curricular uh, advisors to see whether they were planning a particular event or if they have a game scheduled. Uh, and uh, again, in my mind, the effort uh, uh, is worth it. It's, it's, a, it's a very student-centered approach, uh, and I'd like to uh, applaud them uh, for that. So I, I would uh, invite you to attend uh, attractions tomorrow night uh, at 7, for the, which is the final performance. Um, we're busy uh, interviewing, uh, have been uh, this all this afternoon for the uh, baseball coach's position, and we'll be coming back to you uh, with a recommendation uh, for the, I would guess, by the next meeting. Uh, good committee structure for that, uh, utilizing uh, students, parents, athletic director, uh, me. So that I, I felt good about that uh, process. And I think that's it tonight, unless there are questions. Any questions? John? Yeah, I want to compliment you and Dwight in uh, taking care of the parking problem down behind the high school. I've had a brief conversation with Dwight in reference to the illegal parking. I compliment the two of you on approaching that. Uh, we received in our packet uh, something in reference to graduation requirements. Maybe you can clarify this for me. It says under our heading COMP, and it says PROF. Is that computer proficiency? Mm -hmm. And it says Tech 1. And then the next it says COMM SCRV. Would that be community services? Yes. It's community services. This was the result of a survey that uh, was uh, done by uh, schools in the area to uh, see uh, how various uh, schools are approaching uh, the uh, graduation requirements. And the, the reason that uh, especially the uh, computer uh, proficiency is worded a little bit differently is that many schools don't require a, a credit in it, uh, you must demonstrate proficiency. So one of the ways you do that is by earning a credit, but another way might be that you sit for uh, uh, an exam without taking an actual course. Uh, so that's why it's worded a little bit differently. And community service, uh, yes, is the other uh, one. And I notice along the top, none of the schools have a requirement for a foreign language. Is that correct? Uh, graduate, no, not many have a, a requirement for a graduation requirement. For a college preparatory diploma, uh, we strongly recommend it, but uh, for a graduation, a diploma requirement, uh, usually not. Thank you. Uh, I'd, I'd like to thank you for the compliments but, uh, regarding the parking situation, but let you know that we still have quite a ways to go. Uh, we, we are working on it, um, and day to day, sometimes we're successful and other days uh, we're not. But for example, Sue mentioned to me today that uh, today was not a good day uh, back there. So uh, we, we are still working on it and, and trying to come up with some, uh, some possible uh, flexibility there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, Pond Cove. Good evening. I just wanted to bring a couple of items to your attention tonight. First, uh, not all students were disappointed that we had school every day last week. Uh, last week was the first week that the uh, fourth grade mediators got to strut their stuff and do some real mediation on the playground, so they were delighted when school was open every day. You may recall that uh, last year Sarah Berman and her associates extended the training for mediation down to third grade. So we'd have fourth graders in the building uh, trained in those skills. They've met with Sarah regularly every week. There are 19 of them. They've had a one-day training through the Excel grant, and they decided that uh, what they really had to do was advertise their wares a little bit. So on the playground from now on in fourth grade, you'll see uh, <laughs> Small bands of mediators, <laughs> and they, they come with the jackets, and uh, they have little clipboards which describe the process so they can, uh, if somebody has a problem, mediator comes over, or they're asked to come over, and the clipboard details all the rules and regulations um, about uh, how things can be. So it's strictly voluntary, but I understand last week they had uh, more business than ever before. So <laughs> the next step is... Uh, to get business cards. <laughs> so, but it, it's, it's a nice uh, addition to Pond Cove. You may have seen the article in the Press Herald this morning about manners and uh, 
courtesy and kindness to each other. But uh, Pond Cove ha has a norm of all that. I'm sure the other schools do too. So this is an effort to, um, in a structured way, help kids solve the problems that they can solve on their own. So we're pleased with that. And I really thank Sarah Berman and other people who worked on that. The second item is uh, teacher related. We've had the opportunity to hire an ed tech and the uh, core of subs who started last week. So they've been in the building all well, the ed tech every day and the subs have come for three days now and uh, the feedback from that is very positive the teachers appreciate having the time they're writing up um, their minutes they have an agenda so things are structured so far and we'll be fine-tuning that at, um, if it needs any fine-tuning at a team leaders meeting this Thursday and we'll see where we go from there I think with the learning results now a reality uh, this will be very helpful to Pond Cove Any questions? Thank you, Tom. You're welcome. And last, middle school. Good evening. Don't have any props. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, we do have t-shirts. Our, our mediators wear t-shirts. Uh, first of all, I'd like to start off by thanking Gail Schmader for all of the work that she has been doing and will continue to do to organize our career fair, which is set for January 29th. She has 23 presenters who are going to come and present in 25 minute slots to seventh and eighth graders. Most of these presenters are local and are very excited about coming, although a few of them are beginning to voice a bit of apprehension about what you do with 15 seventh and eighth graders staring at you. Um, however, we anticipate the day will be a great success, and I would like to just invite any of you who can drop by for any portion of that time. It's a two-hour time slot, 7.30 to 9.30 on the 29th. The sessions are going to actually begin at 8 o'clock. And you don't have to pre-sign up. The students have done all of that, but any place you want to go, I promise you we'll find a place for you in that room, and you are more than welcome to attend. The other big project, another big project, not the other, but another big project for us is our external review, which, as I mentioned last time, will be taking place on February 4th, 5th, and 6th. We did not receive, when we returned from the holiday break, the listing of the six people who will be coming to do the review. Today we have sent out to them a copy of our report for them to read, and directions to the hotel, directions to the school, Today, during the team leaders meeting, we worked on brainstorming ideas for the schedule and how many people we wanted them to meet with, which is just about everybody who plays any kind of a role in our community. So they will be a busy three days. Also, this morning at the Parents Association, we chose um, Wednesday evening, February 4th, from 7 to 9 p.m. as a time for them to meet with parents and members of the Parents Association. We have a snow date of Thursday, February 5th for them to do that, and that's when they will be meeting with parents. Tonight, at some point in time, or Charlie, at your convenience, uh, we would like to schedule them to meet with any school board members who could meet with them um, either Wednesday or Thursday afternoon after school, sometime 2.30 to 3.30, 3.30 to 4.30, whatever works out and is best for some of you to meet with them so that they can have an opportunity to interview the board. On January 26th, five of our seventh graders will be going to Greeley Junior High School. They have been invited by Congressman Allen's office, as have many uh, local middle schools, to a forum on underage smoking, the parameters of the new law, and what that might mean. And we will be sending them over. Julie Salikas has agreed to go over with them, and it's a morning um, session. And part of it will be an explanation of the situation and then a structured debate. So that will be an interesting experience for five of our seventh graders. The directions asked us to be sure to pick out five seventh graders who had indicated a high interest in public policy. Um, we don't have any seventh graders who have worn a button around saying I'm interested in public policy, but the teachers have made a selection based on what students have demonstrated in class and in class discussions as being interested in public and current issues. So they tried to make the best selection they could. We don't have mediators at our school, but we do have a civil rights team that has been working. And part of the work that they have done um, is an offering to our staff 
for a presentation by the state civil rights team, and I'm not exactly sure who makes up this team, but I know it comes out of the Attorney General's office. And today at our team leaders meeting, we decided to take some of the time on our one of our April <coughs> conference days, two hours, um, to have them come in and do a two-hour presentation for the staff. And much of this has to do with something that we need to do in that sometimes they find in schools that things get overlooked, name calling, other things like that, because after asking people not to do it anymore, adults don't have enough strategies to suggest what might be a way to remediate a problem. And so this is a presentation that they will do with our staff. And now the last part, we don't have a prop, but we are here tonight to say goodbye to uh, one of the icons of Cape Elizabeth and one of the icons of the Cape Elizabeth Middle School. And I just want to warn Mr. Dewart, this is the first of many public statements that will be made in his honor. But um, later on tonight, you will be acting on his retirement. We assume you'll be acting as the way he wished you would act on that. Um, one of the teachers today said, this is going to be hard. Phil's always been here. What am I going to do? And I think that's pretty much the feeling of our school. We're not exactly sure what we're going to do. We know we will continue. Um, we will make him proud of us, um, but we will also miss him. He's been working in Cape Elizabeth for 33 years. That's a little bit longer than some of our faculty have been living, but not all of us. <laughs> he has played the role of teacher, elementary principal, instructional assistant, and then assistant principal. But I happen to know the educational role that he's most proud of is when he could tell you that he's a history teacher. And that's what he loves to do. And um, he certainly was an outstanding history teacher, could still be an outstanding history teacher if he chose to do that. So we are in the midst of preparing lots of different ways to figure out how to say goodbye to him. We haven't quite figured out how to do all of that gracefully, but we certainly do want to thank him for all the time he spent with us, um, the difference he's made in all of our lives, the contributions he's made to young people, and just being himself, which if you know Phil well is an interesting mix of a uh, person who really cares but would rather you didn't know that, so he comes off as Mr. Grumpy, but uh, we know him better than that. So we wish you well, Phil, and uh, we will gather lots of stories for him to think about as he heads to 13 weeks of rigorous training to become a full-time custom official. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? John? I'm going to ask a question and try to tie it into what I asked Peter. Would you explain what the language, foreign language requirements may or may not be in the middle school? I I've had a lot of phone calls, and that's why I prompted me to ask uh, Peter the question, as we're spending a lot of resources to teach our children foreign languages in, under your uh, direction. And as they go into high school, apparently we don't have a requirement that they have to continue and have it as a requirement for graduation. It, and I think as Peter explained to us, I heard him explain, although it may not be a diploma requirement, for anybody who intends to go on to any type of further schooling, it's one of the things, the requirements that the further schooling, re people who receive it for further schooling are looking for. And John, our students start out in fourth grade. Fourth and fifth grade is the same. Um, they all take a foreign language unless they have an individual program that removes them from that. Um, and that's for three times a week for 20 minutes. It's very conversational. It's about learning about the weather, initial vocabulary words, colors, numbers, those kinds of things. In the sixth grade, that increases to four days a week for 30 minutes. And they all take the same language. And it is this year's um, fourth grade is taking French. They'll be doing that as fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. When you get into seventh grade, you get an opportunity to choose if you would like to continue in what we call your target language, um, the one that you started with as a fourth grade, or switch to the other language. So you either stay with French or switch to Spanish or however your year went, your, the cycle that you're in goes. And then in, front, in um, seventh and eighth grade, they take it as a full year course. It meets five days a week for 45 minutes. We do have a few students in the seventh and eighth grade who do not participate in the program. Once again, they are students who may have an individual program plan that does not call for them to be in foreign language. 
The other exception we have is for students who come in new to our school, especially more frequently in the eighth grade, if they have not participated in any foreign language at all, um, we don't always have an easy fit for them and we let them make a choice about coming and inducting into Cape Elizabeth or participating fully in our foreign language program. When they come in as new students in the seventh grade, they can pick up that first year study program that's the switch language for people who have chosen to move away from their target language or the one they started with in fourth grade. So they are required to pass that subject in the seventh and eighth grade to be yeah. promoted into the high school? Oh, yes. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Okay, we move on to committee reports. The first is the Finance Committee and the Capital Improvement Plan. And Keith. Uh, we met briefly uh, tonight at 6.30, signed the, the check warrants and reviewed the appropriations report. Uh, the school board as a whole, uh, basically all of the administration, I think everybody was there, community services, um, and the superintendent met with the uh, town council last Monday, January 5th. Uh, to discuss the capital improvement plan, which is basically just a plan looking over the next five years as to what are some of the major expenditures that we have to make uh, regarding maintenance and upkeep and, and so forth on our different resources, of, both in the school and in the town. Um, very good meetings, getting all of those people together doesn't happen very often, and it's great to hear different people's perspectives on the, uh, the different areas of the town that cost money to maintain. So it, that's, this is all in uh, uh, prior to our budget discussions that are coming up very uh, heavily very soon. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, next, policy subcommittee, and George. Uh, because of the way that the policy subcommittees had been scheduled, um, I've actually already reported out on um, December's, and, uh, and, and January's will be uh, tomorrow at 7.45. Just a, a, a quick recap in terms of what will be happening um, <laughs> tomorrow at 7.45. Um, there will be discussion of the athletics uh, and co-curricular eligibility, um, and we will discuss at that time um, the additional input, which this time is faculty input, and, um, and really take a look at uh, the possible options for revision of that, of that program uh, or that policy. Uh, as I stated before, in the event that there is a decision to revise that, the revision would be uh, um, put together um, but not implemented until the next academic year. Additionally, we'll be taking a look at school bus safety. Um, the uh, Director of Community Services, who will be uh, bringing forward a, um, a set of guidelines, draft guidelines, uh, which we will uh, take a, a look at. Um, and as well, uh, probably just a, a brief uh, discussion uh, with regard to policy IHCA, which is uh, referred to now as the, the time issue. Um, and uh, we essentially have already moved ahead on the strategy for addressing that issue. Um, and we do have a meeting scheduled at 4 p.m. Uh, this Thursday uh, for a group we'll, uh, that will get together uh, a fairly wide representation which we have, we had postponed because you were not available. Okay, I I, I didn't get that message. So oh, I was sorry. Still... Yes, we took your we took your word that you were not available, so it's been postponed. Okay, um, we were going to meet. <laughs> um, on, we couldn't on meet Thursday. without you. Is the issue right? Um, uh, but I, I had uh, what appeared to be a, a fairly evident conflict. It was still kind of shaky, but um, apparently we will postpone that. We'll get um, a, a wide representation of uh, of folks together. Uh, to really have a dialogue about the, t the time issue, uh, specifically as we look at issues and problems and concerns, uh, whenever we boil it down, it always comes down to there's just not enough time. So we need to uh, re-examine uh, what the school day is and what our, as Nancy says, our mental model is of the school day and the school year. And uh, the purpose of this first initial meeting will be just that, a dialogue, kind of an open exchange of ideas, um, a starting point. Uh, it's a very crucial issue and, and uh, one that needs to be dealt with delicately, although we do need to also kind of get moving on it. So um, uh, perhaps we will have that rescheduled for sometime next week. Joe? Where will the uh, meeting be held tomorrow? What location? Uh, it's right here in the conference room. Okay. 7.45 a.m. 
Oh, shucks, I thought PM might be more accommodating. Uh, another quick question. Uh, Mr. Dawson, Peter sent us a little note in, on his agenda. It said, quick update on Walkman policies. Is that something that we're going to be? That's a, that's a high school that's specific. A internal issue to so that's them. nothing to do with the policy committee? Not yet, anyway. We're not regulating <laughs> Walkman at this. Not, not at the board. Though. No. <laughs> it's a small P policy, not a capital P policy, right? Right. Well, it's written with a oh, capital well, we'll W. Oh, we'll have to get after Uh-oh, Thank you. Um, we now move on to unfinished business, and the first is a second reading of policy EEAC, School Bus Safety Program. Um, yes, this is a second reading this time. Uh, we've uh, taken a look at this. Uh, there were some concerns uh, brought to our attention again uh, by Sue uh, around school bus safety. Um, the, a little bit of a follow-up will ha be happening tomorrow at 7.45 at the Policy Subcommittee meeting as we take a look at some operating guidelines. Uh, this is truly a revision of a policy um, and uh, for board members who have the, the copy of it, uh, within the bold print is the uh, proposed change and that specifically says that responsibility for student riders uh, begins when the rider sets foot on the bus and ends when the rider safely exits the bus at their destination and that specific guidelines for the administration of transportation services exist for each school and are available from the superintendent's office. Uh, the other piece, which was really just a clarification, was around emergency evacuation drills. Uh, I think it said shall be conducted periodically or regularly, um, and Sue tells us that that's, um, the requirement is uh, twice a year, and, and that's what we built into the policy. So uh, shall I? make a motion. Uh, I would uh, make a motion to the board uh, that we approve the revisions to policy EEAC, uh, school bus safety program. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Okay, we move on to new business. And the first is a consideration of administrator retirement. Well, as you've all heard, with great regret, we announced the retirement of Phil Jewett as assistant principal at the middle school at a yet-to-be-specifically-determined date in February. Do you have a motion? I just won't let him go. <laughs> <laughs> I need a motion. It'll have to be a board motion, motion, the chair motion. That we accept with regret the, uh, the retirement of Phil Jewett. Do you have a second? Second. Would anyone like to comment at this time? I'll go ahead. Phil, we'll miss you. I haven't known you that long, but all my years on the board, you have been there. And uh, you were very quiet at my first meetings. And finally, we got to, or I got to know Phil a little bit. And I know you're really appreciated by the students, and it will be missed incredibly um, and thank you for all your hard work and all that you do and that we don't even know about um, we will miss you good luck George certainly would like to uh, thank Phil for uh, his incredible dedication and hard work uh, I know the, uh, um, the students in the middle school right now are are going to miss him um, as would any of the middle school students who uh, for Phil is, has been a very popular uh, person and a very popular um, figure at the middle school. Thank you for all those years of service. It's an incredible amount of dedication and, and an incredible amount of time. And, and uh, best wishes and good luck on the new venture. Mr. Jewett, you're going to be a tough act to follow. Uh, I will repeat what you will hear over and over again, that your students and your coworkers will miss, miss you quite a bit. I just want to add my personal thanks for your help in educating me on issues as a, as a, as a parent, as a candidate for school board and as a school board member. It was most helpful. Thank you. Eight and a half years ago when I was elected, the day after the election, I went into the schools and I met with all the principals at the time um, 
was Frank Miles at the high school, and um, Chris Toy was the middle school principal. And I also, also met with uh, Mr. Jewett in the hall of the old 7th and 8th grade wing, Phil leaning on a locker, talking to me for about 15 minutes. Uh, and at that time, he really was an administrator in the building. And uh, I got a lot of insight. At that time, my children were pretty much in the elementary school. I think my first oldest child was a sixth grader. So it was kind of my first child actually in the middle school. So I didn't know a lot about the middle school, but I knew even less about the high school. But I learned a lot in that 15 minutes about the history and how things ebb and tide. And uh, I want to thank you for your, your years of service to this community. I feel unfortunate that my children never had you as a history teacher. I tried to sway my daughter the last year you actually taught history, but she opted to stay with Mr. Moore, as all three of my children did. So. But I know anyone that had you as a history teacher had an outstanding experience, and your love for the subject um, radiated through those children. And they rose to the challenges that you put before them. I think he was one of the first few teachers in the system at that time who actually required a uh, research project. So again, thank you for your years of service. All those in favor? <laughs> <laughs> Seven zero. Next, a consideration of the superintendent's nominations of athletic fee positions for the winter 97-98. I have three. Kristen Haddam as the middle school swim coach. Jason Allen as seventh grade girls basketball coach. And they're both new to coaching with us. And then we have Martin Keene as the middle school indoor track coach, and he is a returning coach. Do I have a motion? I move we uh, accept the superintendent's nominations as listed. Do I have a second? Second. Marie? Any discussion? Um, all those in favor? 7 0. Okay. okay, consideration of the superintendent's nomination of a co curricular fee position for the 1998 spring semester. I have one Michael Hofheimer to be the spring advisor for the art club at the high school. Do you have a motion? I move that we accept the superintendent's nomination for the co-curricular position. George, do I have a second? Second. <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Um, a consideration of the superintendent's nomination of a teacher position. Yes, I wish to nominate Ilse Haig to be a point two position in the English department at the high school for the remainder of the year. Uh, she will be taking one of Dick Mullins uh, sections uh, based on his retirement. The other section has been absorbed by the existing staff. So that's a point two position. One is English. Do we have a motion? Move that we accept the superintendent's recommendation. A second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Seven to zero. Thank you. The next is the PAS um, budget for 90. 1999. Uh, Portland Arts and Technology High School. Um, we have 25 of our high school students attending a variety of programs there. Uh, they are upgrading their programs and equipment and have asked Cape Elizabeth to share in that. I would move that we accept the fiscal year 1999 budget request from Portland Arts and Technology High School for $6,535.25 to be used for equipment and programming. Second. Any discussion? Um, the only thing I would, I would say that essentially five years ago when we first really started sending representatives to the PAS, um, we probably had about six to eight students attending. 
And I think to see the number growing shows that there is a need and there is an interest there. I think the programming that PASS provides is, is an alternative to the things that we don't provide or things that we give initial um, um, exposure to but allow students to develop further interest in. I think when you boil down the amount that we pay per student, and that's all we pay is for uh, new equipment and new programming, um, it, it's quite a bargain. It figures out to be about $262 a student for the year. And that is bargain of the century. That's actually gone down because when we were sending about eight students, it was about $800. Really? So. One, of the, one of the other things is that, that essentially Portland the Portland school system absorbs most of the cost of, cost of running paths, even though they are reimbursed to some extent by the state. That reimbursement has been going down, like a lot of our reimbursements, and the cost of uh, educating students there and the number seems to be growing. So our costs in the future may be going up, but it still would be a bargain, because it would cost us considerably to open our own vocational school, and we are going to have a need for that. Is this an appropriation for beginning next year? Yes, for the 98, 99 year. This is the amount of money that we'll put in our next year's budget. budget. Okay. Any other discussion? All those? In I just got just a little background information for John. Every school district that sends to PADS has to pass the motion for their share. And if one school district does not do that, then they have to go back to the drawing boards and redo the budget again. And that happened last year because two districts uh, so they'd have to reallocate the expenses. They'd have to reallocate. Well, they'd have to look perhaps at cutting their costs, or cutting programs, basically. The, the proposal last year was to start two new programs, and they ended up only starting one program, and that was the um, audiovisual technology. Okay, all those in favor? 7 0. Um, Dates to remember, um, we have a school board policy subcommittee meeting tomorrow morning at 7.45 a.m. in the council chamber conference room. And also Wednesday, February 10th, 1998 at 7.45 a.m. in the council chamber conference room. Charlie, that's actually the 11th. The 11th, okay. Point of that out. Wednesday's the 11th. Okay. That was a mistake last month. Okay, finance subcommittee meeting, Tuesday, February 10th, 1998 at 6.30 p.m. in the council chambers conference room, followed by the regular school board meeting at 7.30 in the council chambers. And we will be having a school board workshop meeting, and the topic is the 1998-99 school budget. These are preliminary talks. This is not the actual budget hearings. On Tuesday, January 27th, at 7 p.m. in the Council Chambers Conference Room. And I would suggest at that time that we focus on any requests for new positions and also some of the technology requests. Um, again, as you say, not, not for any votes, but just to give you some of the background information so that when you go to the March 7th meeting, you'll have some of that already absorbed. And if there are some other areas of interest that you're interested in, could you please get those to the superintendent's office? and if you need any backup information. Do we know yet uh, approximately when the preliminary budget is gonna be published? We'll, we'll get it to you prior to, at least a week prior to the March 7th meeting. Okay. We'll have to see where that falls in terms of February vacation. Sometimes that's an issue, but you gotta give Pauline time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Charlie, would it be beneficial to explain to the community how a workshop operates and how they can participate if they decide to come and attend this, so that they'll be alert as to uh, what they can, what they can't do in terms of presenting their ideas? Um, any workshop is open to the public to comment or to bring any ideas. I mean, um, it's essentially another avenue for the community to dialogue with the board on an, on an informal basis. No decisions are ever made at a workshop. Um, there might be recommendations that would go to appropriate subcommittees or for 
recommendations for the superintendent to, to look at things or to provide additional information. It's a generally an open forum for the board to discuss issues without, without um, uh, approving any formal action. And, and we solicit uh, um, public input. And we wish more people would attend those. They generally are very, the low attendance by the community. I do have to say that our budget hearings have shown in the past three years a, a bigger participation of the community. And that's, right. I understand the process, but sometimes no, I people understand. in the community no. don't. And I've been approached by numerous people, so I thought this might be the correct forum to clarify and inform them. And I can actually say this is probably the first time I've, on the board that we've actually used the budget um, as a workshop other than the actual budget hearing so it's I think we have a lot to to digest and a lot of decisions that need to be made and, um, and any, any avenue or opportunity that we can use to to look at that I think we should so that we don't get down to that last meeting before we have to approve a budget and we're still uh, kind of floundering Um, we had uh, two requests for executive session. Um, the first, an employee contract negotiations. Because of our um, limited uh, finance subcommittee, we did go into executive session to discuss an employee contract negotiations. Um, so we only have one other, and that is a legal matter. I entertain a motion to go into executive session. I would move that we enter into executive session to discuss a legal matter. Do I have a second? Any discussion? All those in favor? Seven, uh, six, John, seven, zero. Couldn't get a uh, printout of the appropriations. 